the year of 2020 did not seem very promising for any travel adventures. But, as they say, where there is a will, there is a way. <laughs> Even though some international trips had to be cancelled, by having a Bulgarian citizenship, I knew that I could go on a hiking adventure and explore the beauties of the Bulgarian mountains. Luckily, out of the 12 trans-European hiking paths, there are three of them that are passing through Bulgaria. The E3, E4 and E8. The E4 section in Bulgaria, also called the Five Mountains, is 260 kilometers long. And as the name suggests, it crosses through five different mountains. Starting from the capital Sofia, through the mountains of Vitusha, Virila, Rila, Pirin and then Slavyanka, ending at the border with Greece. And because the trail passes through Rila and Pirin mountains, the highest mountains on the Balkans, the E4 is characterized as the most alpine trail in the country. That definitely seemed like an adventure I didn't want to miss out on, and at the same time, it was also a chance to get to know the country I grew up in. Only that the mountains with their unpredictable nature had some surprises planned along the way to spice things up. But more on that later. For now, let's start from the very beginning. Before I could even start hiking, first I had to buy a gas canister as soon as the stores opened. Yes. From the ring road at the outskirts of Sofia, I headed up to the Dragalevci neighborhood where the trail officially begins at the Ibex water fountain. Soon after that, the trail climbed up away from the city, entering into Vitusha Natural Park, which is the oldest national park in the country. With its proximity to the capital, Vitusha mountain is the most visited mountain in the country. But because I had a late start, the trails were already almost empty. For a change of scenery, I continued on the trail under a no longer working chairlift, on the lush green and more direct trail. Above the tree line, it became more apparent that there were indeed a lot of visitors, but by this time, most of the people were now on their way down. After Vitusha's highest peak, the trail became quickly void of any people, and it's also where the first blisters began to appear. On the southern slopes of Vitusha, the next mountain of Verila was now lying ahead. Hmm. Arriving at the shelter for the night, the water source had already dried up by the end of August, so I continued along towards the next shelter. Here, a big hiking group had already arrived, so I set up camp and I joined them for dinner. <laughs> Only later did I realize that I had set up camp way too close to the party. Well, lesson learned for next time. On day two, I had to go through Verila mountain, which is the lowest mountain on the entire hike. 
so that meant easy walking in the forest through the mellow rolling hills. However, there was one unique characteristic about Verilla. Its name originates from the ancient Thracians, which means the waterless mountain. So here I had to fill up on water because there were no other water sources for the next 24 kilometers. And here, for the first time, I met a group of young hikers that were also doing the E4. We enjoyed the juicy cherry plums from the trees, but soon after that they stopped for a break and I continued ahead. Reaching the village of Klisura, the end of Virila mountain, because I grew up at the nearby town of Samokov, my dad came to pick me up with a fresh surprise and I enjoyed the restful night at my parents' home. Back in the village of Klisura, I was now entering into Rila mountain, the highest mountain in Eastern Europe. But before I got into the higher parts, I had to cross the forest and fields of the lower Lakatishka Rila. And here for the first time, I had a closer glimpse of the alpine terrain that was lying ahead. Вече навлизаме по горска пътека. Finally, I was entering the more exciting parts of the mountain and I was nearing the famous area of the Seven Real Lakes. Even though I had a tent with me, one big advantage of hiking in Bulgaria was the amount of huts spread out through the mountains, providing food and shelter for the night, which can be especially useful when the forecast does not seem promising. I thought I could enjoy the views outside with a classic bean soup, but it quickly started pouring and I was forced to finish eating inside. Until the weather cleared up for the sunset and I had a cold spa session for the feet. The forecast for this day was for rain and thunderstorms late in the afternoon. So if I wanted to reach my destination while being safe hiking high on the ridge, I had to leave early in the morning. And even though I'm normally not an early riser, these views in the morning are so much worth it.
Walking on top of the ridge, the fog and the clouds were constantly rolling in and out, providing short moments with views and then quickly surrounding you back again. Right after going over Molovica Peak, I had a choice to make, to stay on the E4 on the Mark Trail down towards the hut, or I could take the alternative high route and stay on top of the ridge. Okay, direct to the I thought I still had plenty of time before the storm, so I decided to take the high route. However, the storm rolled in earlier than expected and caught me off guard right before the exposed or Lovets peak without any places to hide. Просто проносите да е малко по-рано почакването. Не го поне заслона. Е близко. Обратно на тревичката. Ето го и заслона. Дурите май почти от мига. Проверявам прогнозата да знам дали да тръгвам или да изчакам още малко тук. Временно времето изкрит, че се оправи. Но го дават пак да върли по-късно, това ще пробвам да стигам до заслон страшното езеро и ще прецена оттам след това какво да правя. From here I had to descend down through this field of rocks in order to get back down to the E4. Връщаме на E4. Друго си е на маркирана пътека. Even though my original plan was to get further that day, I decided to get to the shelter at Strašnato Lake, meaning the scary lake, and to spend the night there. Soon after that, some more rain came in, so I was thankful to be at the shelter, protected from the elements at the heart of the mountain. Hello. Hello, guys. Just here uh, we catch the storm. Oh, shit. Yeah. We survived. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we survived. <laughs> <laughs> The storm had passed, and because I didn't reach as far as I had planned the previous day, I now had a longer day ahead of me. Vitusha mountain, from where the trail had started, was now away in the distance, and I continued further, hiking deeper into Rila mountain. Coming to Vodni Chao Peak, I was now entering into Central Rila and I continued towards the Ribni Lakes hut. If you have seen my John Muir trail video, you know how much I enjoy going for a dip into the Alpine lakes. So, passing by the Ribno Lake, it was no exception.
from this place on the trail stays high on the ridge so I had to stock up on water for the rest of the day. According to the guidebook, the following section on the ridgeline is the most technical terrain in Rilla on the E4 simply because of the amount of rocks and scree that the trail goes through. Зато може да се получи хуб. The feet and legs were already getting tired, but I had only one more peak to climb before reaching the final destination for the night. Към ангелов връх, пътеката си права черта нагоре. And finally, the last descent towards the Macedonia hut. за закуска буровинки. From here I was now entering into the southwest section of Rila where the trail was mostly above tree line though without any technical terrain. Probably my least favorite thing about the E4 were these juniper shrubs with their hard and sharp branches scraping the shin bones as you go through them. The high peaks of Rila were now behind and ahead was the Pirin mountain with its majestic main ridge line. This was the last peak for this mountain that is above 2000 meters and from here it was all downhill towards the valley dividing Rila and Pirin so I switched the trekking post to descending mode to make it easier on the knees. Българска планинска джунгла. Изглежда тази част днес не беше толкова посещавана от хора, защото не срещах нито един планинар, нито в едната, нито в другата посока. From the Predela hut, there was a 3km road walk on the main road to Bansko Reserve 
until reaching upon this sign and then a little bit of more road walking on a quiet road before entering into Pirin National Park. After the long descent yesterday to the valley, today was mostly ascending up through the forest towards the Yavorov hut and then to the higher parts of the mountain. While well, coming from the back side of the hut, the dogs were busy protecting. On the other side, the cats, well, they were just being cats. Днешният етап свършва тук на Хижа Яворов, но понеже има още време, реших да продължа към засона кончето и да пренощувам там. Because I was planning on staying the night at the shelter on top of the ridge, I had to camel up and stock up on water for the night and for the next morning. Getting above tree line and on top of the ridge, I was now greeted by the beauty of Piri. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. High up on the ridge line, the Conchetu shelter was recently renovated with a solar panel, electricity, and three floors with rooms for hikers. And from a completely empty shelter at the start of the night, soon after, a few other groups of hikers joined in to an almost totally full shelter. From here, together with Plamen, a fellow hiker with similar passions, we started hiking together towards the famous ridge named Conchitu, meaning the little horse. By spending the night up high at the shelter, we arrived early at the narrow ridge with steep vertical cliffs on both of its sides. After crossing Conchitu, it was time to continue towards Vichren, which is the highest peak in the Pirin Mountains. There was a long day ahead of me, so on top of Vichren we said our goodbyes. <laughs> and I continued descending towards the Vichren hut.
a classic bean soup and a short break at the hut. I had to start going up again to get back up to the main ridge. Approaching the ridge line, the trail was again going through some rocky terrain and even though walking through them was still slow, it was much better with the dry rocks and the sunny weather. From here, the trail follows the ridge line through multiple peaks before reaching the Mozgovishka Pass at the end of the ridge. I don't have to go to the Tevnove Zoro and to the Shiro Cup. I reached Tevno Lake, the final destination for the day, where for preservation reasons it was not allowed to swim in the lake. So the dip in the lake had to be compromised for an outdoor shower. From Tevno Lake, the trail then continues to a mountain pass, which is the last place on the trail that is above 2,600 meters. After going over the pass and descending down the old glacial cirque, the trail then transitions to high mountain pastures. Here the cows were the maintainers of the land and were mowing the grass low. Wow. Lower down the trail, a shepherd helped us with directions and I met one couple, Setsu and Andy, they were also doing the E4. See you over the hut. See you over the hut. Bye. Down in the valley, the trail now enters into old forests with living trees that have been growing for multiple centuries. Getting out of the forest ahead was the last climb of the day, traversing on the left side of Orelak Peak. The high peaks of Northern Pirin were now away in the distance and I had open up views to Southern Pirin as well as Slavyanka mountain, the fifth mountain and where the E4 section in Bulgaria ends.
I tied the shoes one last time and headed out for the last day of hiking on the trail. Днес предстои дълъг ден. Всъщност най-дълги за целия преход днес. The plan for this day was to start early and combine two stages of the trail into one day. But from the multiple days of hiking, the legs and the body were in good shape for the longer day. In Southern Pirin, the entire section is on dirt roads which made for easy walking and worry-free navigation. And after descending through the forest, ahead was now Slovyanka, the final mountain on the E4 trail. Down at the saddle between Pirin and Slovyanka, is where the stage for that day usually ends, but I now had a long climb to the highest peak in the Slovyanka mountain. Do tog beš iz černi pot večo tog si započeo hova poteka. I neka iskačvanje tu da započne. And after climbing through the forest and coming up to the ridge, ahead was now the Bulgarian Greece border, as well as the final peaks for the E4. <coughs> Passport, please. Passport, yes. There you go. Welcome to Greece. Thank you. Already hiking alongside the border, the trail officially ends on top of Gotsev Peak, the highest peak of the Slovyanka mountain. Oh. Here is Е, четири приключва тук. Днес имам голямо разнообразие от планински красоти в нашите планини. Ни сникте, че река руме. 